public is waiting, Mr. Eves. I'll be there in a minute. Now, let me see. Electricity price caps. Come on, lucky eight ball. Help me out. Hmm. That'll do. Now, health care. Now, will I win the election? Uh, will I win the election? Uh, will I win the election? Uh, what would you do with electricity? We, the, the Tories said they were going to deregulate. They didn't deregulate. They just sort of re-regulated. Yeah. It was a disaster, as many people predicted it would be, and right. they, they bailed out far too soon, in my estimation. Now they've, uh, now they've capped the prices, which is ridiculous, because you can't do that, but they're doing it. We're going to, one way or another, we're going to pay for the, pay the cost of electricity, whichever way it is. We're still going to pay. How would you do it differently? Well, this has, been, this has just been catastrophic. As you know, uh, all of the experts from Energy Pro, from the generators, the distributors, the transmitters, uh, uh, we have right now the distributors, the local utilities, are, are looking at about $500 million in investments for metering and et cetera that was needed to be installed just to accommodate uh, a, a free market for electricity pricing. And now they're saying, well, now you've capped it at 4.3 cents. Where are we going to get the money? Municipally, I think we're going to be looking at higher taxes. I think we're going to be looking at much higher taxes and debt uh, provincially. And we're certainly not going to fix the electricity supply problem because Ernie Eves and now Dalton McGinty and his liberals have unil or, or sorry, just unanimously backed him on this. They've put this price cap in there, which has frightened the daylights out of new generators. We will mm -hmm. not see new electricity generation in this province. And the only way that uh, he is going to be able to save his skin uh, whether we're talking Eves or McGinty, because they're on the exact same page on this, is if uh, they bring these nuclear reactors online, which is the, another huge mistake, because if you look at the history of uh, electricity and how we got into this mess in the first place, we were spending billions upon billions to run these uh, price inefficient, cost inefficient nuclear stations, when in reality what we needed to be focusing on was more cleaner sources, uh, renewable sources of energy. Uh, we shouldn't have been sinking, sinking two billion dollars of taxpayer money into uh, putting Pickering A up years late, mm -hmm. way over budget, when in fact even when we get it up and running it's going to be very expensive to, to generate the electricity. I gather you can't be too thrilled with the way Mr. Eves has frozen the price of electricity below what the market would bear. I, I am not happy with that at all, not simply because of uh, some kind of ideological or you know, economic bent, but rather because as a result of that 4.3 cent cap, if you consume zero electricity, you're paying the highest possible rate per kilowatt hour. In fact, you're paying for the guy's electricity consumption next door, you're paying for commercial consumption, you're paying for industrial consumption, even if you consume none. How's that? Because uh, you pay for a portion of that, but because of the, the 4.3 cent cap, the rest of the cost of the electricity has to be paid through PST and other taxes. That's the hidden, secret, dirty, dirty part of this price cap. You're really paying. Taxpayers are subsidizing. That's another priority for the party. Electricity has to be handled, and it has to be handled soon. McKeever says the Eves McGinty 4.3 cent price cap on electricity is scaring investors who are thinking of building more power generation facilities in Ontario. The Freedom Party wants to eliminate the price cap, which it believes would give companies confidence to invest in Ontario. And he's certainly now trying to distance himself from his own party's decision uh, to uh, open up the uh, price of electricity to uh, competition, which was wrong, not because uh, uh, there wasn't something to be done, but because he did the wrong thing. The right thing would have been to explain to the public how they can cap their own fees by entering into contracts with retailers. Mm -hmm and to explain to them that this is a short-term bumpy ride that is the result not of free market uh, change, but this is, this is a pattern of 20 or 30 years of government-controlled, uh, price-capped, overly taxed electricity suddenly coming onto your bill, not partly taxed and partly on your bill, but the whole thing is showing. It's transparent. You can see it now. This is what you've really been paying for electricity all along. All along, yeah. And now all he's really doing is fooling people. We put a, a three, 4.3 cent cap on the bill, but you keep paying, the government keeps paying whatever the generator charges. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really just a, a bit of a shell game. And ultimately, all he's really done now is, now instead of paying just for your own bill at 4.3 cents, you're going to be paying for General Motors. You're going to be paying for all of the industrial, I mean, residential consumption in Ontario is 27%. The rest is commercial and industrial. And when a good portion of it is paid through the tax system, guess what? 
The guy is doing his part, trying to keep the lights low, turn off the lights, and just generate a little bit of electricity, use a little bit of electricity, pay a small bill, is now paying a small bill, but paying a lot of, uh, paying for a lot of electricity that other people use through the tax system. Who's hurt most? The poor. Ironically, they're now going to be paying more for their electricity with price caps than they would have been paying without them. There are some people who would say about the electricity issue that, that this is nothing new. Subsidizing our rates is nothing new. And the proof of that is the $37 billion debt that was left over when Ontario Hydro was split up. That, in fact, we've been subsidizing electricity rates for almost as long as Ontario Hydro has been in business. Right. Why is it more significant now, do you think, than it was then? Uh, I don't know that it is any more significant now. I think it's, it was bad then. It was better for a period while uh, following the uh, May 1 uh, transition to deregulation. Mm -hmm. But there was no chance given uh, for the market to adapt to the fact that now you're going to have to pay for the electricity you consumed. There should have been more education for the consumer to realize that if they wanted to cap the rates themselves, they should have been entering into contracts with retailers and they were available at reasonable rates. Uh, instead, we saw a politically expedient solution. That is, let's not tell the public how much the electricity is really costing. Let's cap it at 4.3 cents, which doesn't mean that's all you're paying. It just means that that's all that's on your bill. Well, but people know that, though. I get the sense they don't care. And perhaps not. Uh, you know, if you, if you put it on the, on the company credit card for long enough, uh, you might forget that it's even there. But we are, we are reaching a point now where socialism it cannot, it's not, it's not financially feasible anymore. And that's why we're seeing the introduction of things like these P3s, public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. These were tried in the 1930s in, in Germany and Italy. Uh, they're nothing new. They're called, it's just called a, it's a form of socialism called corporativism, where the ownership of the, uh, you know, the, the systems, if you will, mm -hmm. the medical system or the electrical system, is private, but the government controls the operation entirely. This is sort of the last gasp breath for socialism when you can't afford to buy, the, buy any more reactors or put any more things together. You let other people put them together for you. You beg them to come in and put things together for you, but then you tell them how to run the things. Of course, it doesn't work. Nobody's coming in to build reactors. Nobody's coming yeah. in to build power uh, because they all know that the result is going to be that they're going to be told how to run those and they're not going to be able to make any profit.